Dutch police enter, enter to, which is what I was getting to. The Dutch police officers fall under the direction of the chief of police of St. Martin, Mr. Cal John. In addition, in addition, his management structure as well. Do they have, they do have on the ground support with all, well, let me put it this way. The Dutch uh, police officers do have on the ground support when it comes to HR related matters, um, and they have a focal point from the Netherlands. This helps them with their hotels, their airlines, their car rentals. So that's why they have that individual here that assists them with that. But as far as the operations are concerned, that's all falls under Cal John and the management team. Does the signing of the function book include the LBM? No, it does not. It's just a ministerial regulation. When will the placement process take place? Uh, that will start once the committees are in place. The ministerial decree for those committees have already been established. We have we, we were waiting on the names from the KOA. Those names were provided recently on June 3rd or the 4th. They gave us a deadline to provide it. Uh, that will be done. And once those committees are in place, then we can actually start with the placement. And the question was asked about the functions being incorrectly evaluated. Uh, if the function had been incorrectly evaluated, will this be reevaluated and corrected within short, sp specifically between three months? I'm um, not aware, and these would have been addressed or should have been addressed with the KOR uh, in those meetings before they gave the green light of no objections. So everything that's in the function book was presented to the KOR, and the unions and their members had opportunities to adjust any incorrectly evaluated uh, functions. So I'll have to get back to you in writing with that one. As far as the group of officers out of Suriname, those are, those are individuals who are on contracts, and that, that was before my time. Mr. Chairman, I believe those are the answers to the questions, and I hope that the presentation was enlightening and provided the clarity needed. Uh, I would also like to point out that, you know, at some point, um, decisions have to be taken. Um, it's been, as they say, nine years without a function book. Uh, we can't continue any longer. And a decision was taken, and I stand by it, uh, to ensure that the process can continue and that the financial consequences can be determined and that can be reflected in the budget as well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the Ministry of Justice was one of those ministries that that needs to be reformed. Um, we don't have, we didn't have anyone in planning and control, for example. Um, it's, ex it's extremely important if you're going to produce a budget now or in the future that you do, you do so based on the reality of the situation. And then if you're going to hire new staff, if you're going to adopt new policies, those all have to be reflected and those have to be taken up by your planning and control individuals in the ministry. Uh, we did not have one before. Um, there were no year plans before. So we are in the process of establishing all of these things. And the person for planning and control has been hired. And the year plans have been received. And those are all being worked into the entire year plan for the ministry as well. So we are following the right procedures to make sure that 2020, uh, 
these are not any issues anymore in 2020 and beyond. In order to do so, there must be stability. I think if we look back over the last nine years, and MP Richardson spoke about the last three, um, I think we can also understand then the challenges that we are faced with and correcting those um, issues that he said obviously did not work. So as we stay steadfast on getting this done, we thank you for your support during that time. If I understood correct from the minister or even Saskia in the presentation just now, this presentation was not given to any of the unions as yet. And so my first, my first question would be then why the whole sign-in um, ceremony picture because that is what make it misleading or make it seem misleading because the truth is they see it. So they, they, they sign, they signed something and took a picture to something that they didn't know about. So it comes across as if they, they were brought, you know, they catch them off guard, they, they get sidelined, like, like, so I can understand why the, the heat was coming earlier. Um, and I think that's where the problem is for this whole situation. See, my next question was going to be again, was at any point was this information provided? But it wasn't. Um, were they informed about the legitimacy of the Rexpositi regeling of 2010 after the minister found out that um, that's something that was published without a date, still goes, it's still, it is still valid. Were they informed about that when the minister found out that information? Again, if this is something that is to come in the presentation to them, it almost makes everything I'm about to ask uh, everything invalid because the truth is this information needed to be provided to them before you even came back here or before we even had the whole propaganda of the picture taken and everything. been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Now, moving forward from the current situation, well, what are some of the threats or situations that head us going forward? Well, the main one um, is the concept of shared dilution. Um, this is one of the central motives behind my reasoning for bringing um, this, this initiative. Um, as a representative of the people, I, I believe we have a res responsibility to the assets of the country. 
and to see the possibility of, through shared dilution, which I will explain in the next slide, can actually have an effect in terms of the value of the assets plummeting to maybe even 10% or 5% of what it currently is. This is actually the people's asset. So the responsibility would be to try to prevent share dilution from diminishing the value of the people's asset. Debt absorption is also a reality of a threat going forward. This means that the new buyer, having had a partnership with Curacao, can absorb debt into the company. And you know any company that has an additional amount of debt, the value of the company obviously decreases, which is another threat to the value of the people's asset. And finally, projected income uh, from owning 12.5% seems to be much less than the value of the current cash needs of the country. I say this based on the fact that General Audit Chamber financial statements have shown that UTS has not been paying uh, any or, if at all, significant dividends to the 12.5% that we own. And the main thing you would want from having ownership in a company is income to the coffers of the budget. This is not projected to be the case going forward. However, what is projected going forward is that the country needs cash urgently. Now, I mentioned the concept of shared dilution just a while ago. I have a brief video here that I believe um, can summarize better than I would um, what shared dilution is using a practical example of a small business. Um, but I hope with this short two-minute video, we can have a better understanding of the threat that St. Martin faces through the concept of shared dilution. Oh. I think, there we go. Meet Joe and Oliver. They decided to set up a software company called Joliver Limited. And together they invested $100,000 in the business venture. The company issued 100,000 shares of a dollar each. In exchange for the investment, each founder received 50,000 shares to reflect the capital invested. Joe and Oliver decided they would like to buy a competitor, Danny's Codes Limited, which costs $200,000. Joliver Limited has only $100,000 available. What will they do? Zoe, Joe's aunt, comes up with an idea. She will invest the additional $100,000 in Jolliver Limited to become one of the owners of the company. Joe and Oliver agree. Success! The company issues another 100,000 shares of a dollar each and exchanges them with Zoe for the funds and promptly buys Danny's Codes Limited. Let's study what happened to Joe's and Oliver's holdings. Initially, Joe and Oliver held 50,000 shares each from 100,000 shares issued to shareholders. We can say that Joe and Oliver each controlled 50% of the total shares outstanding of Jolliver Limited. Let's see what happened after Zoe joined them. Both still control the same 50,000 stocks, but now they are a smaller part of the whole outstanding shares that grew to 200,000 shares outstanding. What does the ownership and control of the company look like now? Joe controls 50,000 of 200,000 equals 25%. Oliver controls a similar stake equals 25%. Zoe controls 100,000 of 200,000 equals 50% of the company. Joe's and Oliver's relative part in the company just shrank. And with respect to control, now just Zoe, with one of the shareholder support, could decide what the company does when 51% majority is needed, even if the other original owner disagrees and votes against the proposal. This phenomenon, the printing of stock by the company, which reduces the relative size of the asset held by existing shareholders, Joe and Oliver in our case, is called dilution. It dilutes, takes away the potency and power of each and every pre-existing stock. Printing more shares means nothing for the clients and managers of the Jolliver Limited. It's still the same company delivering the same products or services. So I hope that short video, just to summarize what we just saw, you have a situation where a company has 100,000 in shares. If you add another 100,000 in shares, the value of the existing 100,000 is literally cut in half. This is a possible reality. It's totally legal and a very common concept, especially in large companies after takeovers. So what could potentially happen, for example, um, St. Martin now has 12.5%. 
Liberty decides, well, we want to expand, we want to inject, so we want to bring in another, a third partner, for example. They issue more shares, and therefore the value of our 12.5% that was once 22 million guilders could potentially drop to 10 million, 5 million, maybe even as low as a million, depending on how many shares are distributed by, um, yes, by the situation. So basically that I, I think is a very important part that I, I think I wanted to share with you as that is a potential reality that St. Martin faces without taking actions to empower the government to sell the shares. Hey ma, how you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is? <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want, I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Viv now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Wib today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Winwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner in progress. Who you're for? As Anti-Poverty Platform and Consumers Coalition has been asking publicly for quite some time how many homes government has built back better and stronger. Well, finally, the Prime Minister in her national address said that she was elated to report that the St. Martin Housing Development Foundation is close to completing 109 social home repairs while 160 units that have been repaired already are being reviewed to assess the eligibility for retroactive financing. Will the 160 persons who fix their homes already, will they get their money back for repairs done? The Prime Minister said that door to door social screening of the private homes of 135 households has been completed and technical assistance to determine the repair needs of these homes are about to start followed by construction. If government fixes these additional 135 social housing units before the peak of the hurricane season which starts in August then almost two years after Hurricane Irma, government has fixed a total of 295 homes. Some non-governmental organizations 
have been assisting in fixing a 300 homes in the past two years. If we deduct these 600 homes now from the more than 13 to 15,000 homes, which is 70 to 80 percent of the dwelling units in St. Martin, which are mentioned in the National Recovery and Resilience Plan to be built back better and stronger, then we want to know when the other homes, an amount of 12,400, will be fixed. The Prime Minister said that she is ultimately responsible for disaster management on this island and that she has taken the responsibility very serious. Prime Minister Leona Malin, according to us, you became Prime Minister of St. Martin after Irma caused the disaster on the island. So how do you go about disaster management for the families in the inadequate housing structures, in the inadequate housing situation which was exposed by Hurricane Irma? We didn't hear that in your national address. How prepared are we for the next hurricane season? As St. Martin Anti-Poverty Platform, we have been addressing this issue of who is responsible for risk reduction in the state, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. We have illustrated in former press briefings that it is the Kingdom government which at World Conferences of Disaster Risk Reduction is representing our state. We have illustrated that according to international treaties signed by the Kingdom, the Kingdom government did not comply to guarantee the right of adequate housing as part of the right to an adequate standard of living in this part of the Kingdom. Both Hurricane Louis and Hurricane Irma has shown that the housing situation in St. Martin was inadequate. So Prime Minister and the government of baby country St. Martin, we are aware that you are strangled by the Kingdom Government's Committee for Financial Supervision. Where are the funds for the government of St. Martin to realize the human right to adequate housing for all the 13,000 poor and needy households? It was the Dutch military and the Minister of Kingdom Relations who were the first to report to the world that more than 70% of the houses in St. Martin were structurally damaged. So how serious the Kingdom government has been with their responsibility to rebuild back better and stronger the 70% of the homes damaged. Hello St. Martin, my name is Stephanie Medina and I play football with the Walichi Roma soccer team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games, for example the Dutch Caribbean Women's Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and will help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter. Hashtag are you in? The third and the final registration period for new students who wish to enter the public school system for the academic year 2019-2020 that began on June the 3rd and goes on until June the 14th, 2019. Parents, you are asked to register your children at the school closest to your home. The schools 
processing registrations are Ruby La Bega School, the Marie Genevieve de Weaver School, the Martin Luther King School Jr., and the Leonard Connor School, as well as the Oranje School. At the Oranje School, they're currently hosting their Book Week 2019, and the program is doing well. The first Book Week was held in 1968, some 33 years ago, and I was privileged to be at the opening of that very first Book Week. And now, tw 33 years later, I was again able to encourage the students at the Urania School to read and to read and to read more. Congratulations to the teachers and to the managers for organizing such a fun-filled way of engaging our children with reading. Thank you also to the parents and to the students for the efforts that you have shown and your level of participation that makes this event so commendable. Remember, readers are leaders, so keep on reading. Congratulations to the Lion King production. Over the weekend, I attended the opening of the Lion King St. Martin production. It was truly a magnificent display of local talent. Congratulations to the producers, the organizers, the staff, cast, and all who played a supporting role. Hard work certainly pays off. And this production does St. Martin very well. It shows that our creative industry is thriving and also it demonstrates another marketable aspect of our culture. Congratulations to Malcolm Phillips. Also, over the weekend, Malcolm Phillips returned to the Kara box in uh, Curaçao, and he walked away with another victory under his belt. He is now the two-time champion for this regional event in the 69-75 kilogram weight division. Congratulations to Malcolm, to his teammate Stephen Duzon, who also did well, and to their coach, Earl Duzon. <laughs>